Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Austin. This is going to be our first video on the channel we're going to call Digital Power Trip. We decided to start this channel because we like gadgets, we like games, we like all things electronic from uh, videography, photography, if it's got a chip in it or bits running on it, we like it. So I was at Austin's house the other day and he was playing games on his big screen TV off of a Raspberry Pi. And I have heard of Raspberry Pi. I've actually seen them before. Uh, the, for those of you who don't know, they're a full computer on a chip that's about this big. And uh, I thought that was the coolest thing I ever saw. He was playing all kinds of retro games and games that I played when I was growing up. And I had to know more about it. So what I had was a Raspberry Pi Zero that I had put into a NES cartridge. The way I got started with that, I was watching YouTube videos uh, about... Retro Pie and game emulation, and I came across one that was specifically talking about putting a Raspberry Pi Zero inside of an NES cartridge, and I thought that was awesome. So I made one, I took it to work a few days later and showed it off, and everybody that saw it thought it was awesome. So uh, I was commissioned to make a few of those, and from there it just turned into an obsession. Uh, I talked to Chris about it, and he was like, I have an idea. Let's make a game cabinet out of it. I had always wanted my own arcade machine. And as you can see from here, I now have my own arcade machine. It's, it's incredible. Uh, and really, uh, I've only got about 300 bucks total in it. And that includes if I had, well, actually it's less than that because I didn't even have to pay for a lot of the computer guts that are in it because I had them laying around the house. So let's start from the beginning of this thing. We started off with the idea to build it off of that Raspberry Pi platform like I had built the NES cartridge off of. Uh, but as we got to thinking about it, we wanted it to play games that were more uh, processor intensive. Basically what happened was I said, why don't we go bigger? Why, why are we staying standard and small? Let's think, let's think big. So from there, uh, I had an old uh, motherboard laying around my house that had a CPU already in it. Uh, Chris had some RAM. I had a power supply. I had an old monitor in the basement that was doing nothing but collecting dust. So we ended up buying some plywood, these joystick components, and here we are uh, with this machine sitting in front of us. So for the rest of the video, we want to talk about kind of the process that we went through to put this beast together. Yeah, and uh, don't, don't let it fool you. Um, we learned a lot along the way that we had no idea we were going to even encounter. Uh, the cool thing about projects like this is when you, you know, there are tutorials on YouTube and there are things you can do, but till you get in and get your hands dirty, you, you really don't know what you're getting into. And we'll talk about some of the, the pitfalls we had along the way and some of the upgrades that we're probably going to do to this thing because when you got a project like this, is it, is it ever really done? It's, it's not ever done. And hopefully through the process of this video, you guys will learn something, get a little in a bit of entertainment. We can also touch on, like he said, some of the things that we got caught up on. So maybe when you guys go to make a project, you can run more smoothly than we did. Yeah, like if we made another one of these things starting tomorrow, we could probably do it in half the time. How long do you think we have in this thing? Uh, all in all, including breaks and downtime, I mean, we're sitting at probably two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks. which is not that bad when you think, I've got my very own game machine sitting right inside my house. And we both work full-time jobs, so don't let it discourage you to think two weeks. Uh, and it really doesn't take the technical knowledge that you would think. Nah. We've pretty much done everything off of basic computer knowledge and online tutorials. Yeah. And literally, if, it, if, if you've thought about it already, somebody's probably done it. Original ideas seem to be few and far between nowadays. But that's what's great about technology is people are constantly building on top of what somebody else has done already. So from here, we're probably going to take a cut and move on to some of the pictures of the insides and talk about what it took to build this thing. Okay, so let's take a step back. Once um, we decided we were going to build this thing, we had to figure out how we wanted it to look and how big we wanted it to be. And I wanted something that was low profile. I didn't want something that was taking up a ton of room in the house. So we decided we wanted something that would be wall mountable. And uh, the overall dimensions I thought sounded good were 40 inches tall by 24 inches wide. So I whipped open Illustrator, set a canvas to 24 by 40, and just started laying a shape out. And this is what I ended up with. So I have two of these sides, and then from the sides, I uh, drew kind of a, a front and got the dimensions for all that stuff. And once I had the dimensions, I just basically wrote them down on paper. 
and from there we went on to the hardware store. I mean, what? That's the next logical step, right? So we ended up with three sheets of 24 by 48 inch, half inch MDF. And we started uh, measuring everything out, doing our uh, horizontal cuts on the table saw. When it came time to uh, use the jigsaw, we put both of the sides together and then we sanded them all out so they would be even. Um, then we started assembling the cabinet. Uh, we laid it down, we put uh, two two by four braces at the top and the bottom, made it really easy to make sure that uh, it was the correct width. Then we threw some glue on there and then we grabbed a brad nailer and went to town, started nailing the thing together. Uh, worked out really good. And then when we got to the time to do the piece for the controls, I had printed out a sheet that had uh, had my uh, holes all laid out, and we just took a punch and punched down in the center and then used a, a spade bit and drilled it out. That's what we ended up with uh, before we started painting. And once we started painting, we used spray paint the first go around. looked like crap. looked terrible. So we decided to use a foam cabinet roller and latex paint. Uh, after about four coats, it looked pretty good. The next step was to uh, assemble the internals, and we decided to go with uh, PC motherboard, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, AMD processor, and you can see it's laid out there. We did use a, a joystick button for a power button. It worked out pretty good. I think we're pretty happy with that setup. So speaking of buttons, let's talk about the joystick set that we got. Um, we got a Winit, W-I-N-I-T, from Amazon, and it's a USB joystick that has a USB controller board. comes with 10 buttons. Uh, it's a really nice setup. The only issue that we had was that I wanted the buttons to stay lit the entire time, and the way they're pre-configured, they're only lit when you press them. So um, I looked around online, and I saw it said that if you change the yellow wire and the black wire, that it would illuminate them. So I changed them at the button end, and it turned out to be that I needed to change them at the clip end. And once I had them uh, changed at the clip end, everything functioned just the way uh, I thought it should. And no arcade cabinet is ever complete without its own set of custom graphics. So we took our designs from Illustrator, laid them out in our vinyl cutting application, and sent them over to the plotter. Once the designs were finished cutting, we moved to the next step, which is called weeding. Weeding is an extremely tedious process where you remove the excess vinyl, leaving your design intact on the carrier sheet. When your blade is dull like mine was, and your eyesight's going bad, it makes it very hard to see where the cuts are. But in the end, it was worth it because I think the graphics turned out very well on the device. Now we're going to move to the inside of the arcade cabinet and kind of show you how everything was put together. Alright, so here's the inside of the back of the unit. And you'll see that uh, we did a little bit of uh, what you would call shade tree engineering. Yeah, that's the word we'll use. So at the top here, you'll see our um, hanger, which is basically uh, made for very heavy, up to 200 pounds, and uh, the other parts on the wall right here. So it's done a really good job. I've had it off and on multiple times. We'll just start at the top um, with the back side of our monitor. I couldn't find a appropriate device that was Visa mount that would work um, inside of this thing right off the bat. I'll probably end up ordering something. But what we ended up doing uh, was we used a little plumber strap and uh, just uh, did the best we could. But it worked out fairly well. Um, and then down here you'll notice our speakers. Um, they're taped in, but they're also uh, silicone glued in. So we just used the tape to hold them in place until the glue dried and there was really no need to take the tape off so we just left it. 
Moving on down, uh, we have our power supply and our motherboard. Um, if you'll notice, the hard drive is different from what we originally started with, and that's because uh, I was loading ROMs on and the hard drive crashed because we used a scavenged old hard drive, and that's what happens sometimes when you use used parts. So now there's a laptop hard drive in there, and eventually we'll probably upgrade to an SSD. Um, so then we also put a power strip, and then there's the subwoofer for the speakers. And it uh, has a port that fires straight out of the bottom, and notice there's a gap in there. And then there's also um, the driver on this side. So overall, it's kind of messy inside. We're going to clean it up, but we're still playing with it. Um, we also have a Bluetooth, or not a Bluetooth, but a, uh, an RF keyboard that we use to do some controls in the system. And that's in there. We also have a button Wi-Fi that is absolutely horrible, and we're going to change that out. Get a little bit better Wi-Fi to it. So uh, those are some of the first things we're thinking about doing. But overall, just wanted to give you a shot of the guts of this thing. Hit it. So this is what you boot into when you boot it up. This is our desktop. It's just like any Linux box would look, sitting on somebody's desk that they use for their daily driver. Except for we're using Ubuntu because it's easily obtainable and obviously open source and it's, it's easy. There's a lot of things that are out there for it already and they have a uh, RetroPie distribution for uh, Ubuntu. And like Chris said, a lot of people already use Ubuntu so it, there's a ton of free tutorials, uh, stuff out there that makes it easy for you to work on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop into RetroPie. It's down here in the dock. So we'll start it. It starts up Emulation Station which is gonna be the front end of RetroPie that we're using, so the graphical user interface. There are a couple different things you can use. Um, you can, from Emulation Station, you can jump over into uh, a, a front end called a track mode. A track mode. And they're just different in how they look and uh, or pre present the games to you. So, but if you'll notice, if you'll just kind of scroll through, here are the systems that we have installed. We have, if you notice too, I'm controlling all directly from our input here on the Retrocade. Yeah. So jump on over to the RetroPie screen. The cool thing about this uh, emulation station is it's fairly simple to configure. If you'll notice, we have our own, um, we have our own background here uh, themed for us. And it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do. There's a million tutorials. You can check those out. But if you can copy a file over to a folder, you can kind of skin it a little bit the way you want it. Yeah, and like Chris said, this is really easy to set up. Uh, I want to name drop a dude that really helped us out doing this. Uh, we didn't talk to him directly. He just has a lot of really good informative tutorials. His name's ETA Prime. If you're interested in doing anything like this, he's a good dude to check out. We'll link him in the description. Yeah, he's a YouTube guy. So um, inside of our RetroPie configuration here, there's uh, some options you can choose from. You've got audio settings, Bluetooth, configuration editor, ES themes, so that'd be your emulation station themes. File manager, which is just a basic file manager you can use, in but we're, we're using Linux. You can get all to the file structure through the back end through Ubuntu instead of using this, so it's a lot easier to do that way. Um, what are you saying? Are you saying Ubuntu? I always called it Ubuntu, but I mean, hey, tomato, tomato, right? That's right. But anyway, um, so like I said, this is pretty much just the menu you use to set up um, some of the settings here in RetroPie. So and we really, you really don't have to fool with a ton of it right out of the box. No. I mean, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, what is it? RetroPie.uk or something like that? Yeah, we'll link to it in the yeah. description. But it's uh, it, they have full... You know, full tutorial videos, everything on how to get you started. It's, re it's really simple to do. All right, so you've been listening to us talk for a minute, so we're going to go ahead and jump into a game. B, back. So let's play, let's start with something kind of arcade -y since this is, you know, a retrocade. Oh, yeah. So oh, this is awesome. So I we'll, know what he's going to go to right yeah. away. We'll go to Neo Geo, and we are going to pick B. Yeah. We're going to jump to M. If anyone can guess what we're going to. 
Yeah, Metal Slug. <laughs> this is definitely one of my favorite arcade games. So if you notice here, it has an option for you to configure. You can come in and configure your controls by holding A whenever that pops up. Or, once you're in the game, if you hit Tab, you can control it. So, being that this was coin-operated back in the day, um, we, we set up the uh, select button to add credits. You'll see that right here. So we'll give him three credits, and he'll start, and then it kind of shows you what the controls do. And then you pick your character. This is like one of our favorite shoot 'em ups. The graphics are pretty good for back in the day, I think, don't you? All right, so that gives you a, you know a basic idea of how this works, and I mean it, it runs really, really much flawlessly. So uh, show them how you jump out of the game. So to get out of a game, it's just start and select at the same time. So jumps you right out. And that'll be a good time because I know that was loud as crap. But uh, it'll be a good time to talk about um, what we what we put in this box for sound. So obviously you can see where the speakers are. Um, what we did was I went and looked on Amazon for about the cheapest uh, speaker set that I could find that was 2.1. So we've got these uh, two inch speakers and there's a subwoofer mounted, uh, mounted in the bottom of the cabinet and it gives it a little bit of bottom end. Not too much, but it sounds easily as good as any uh, arcade cabinet that I've ever played. What do you think? Oh, definitely. And uh, you have to think a lot of these games were set up to run off of mono audio. That's right. So the 2.1 may not be necessary in a setup that you're doing, but we've got, I mean, you can play everything up to a Nintendo 64, which definitely used stereo. So Yeah, and then some of the arcade cabinets. Uh, go to MAME real fast. We'll jump in there and just pick like, uh, do one of the 1942. I know lots of people play the crap out of that thing. This is like a... Um, Good Rev B. This is a, an airplane shooter from like what, the 90? 1984. It's a, so it's, this game is actually older than Austin is. So it's, Oh, well, that's really good. It takes you two seconds and you get killed. But this is like, I see a lot of people talking about 1942. They just really love it. So just run through and it's a shoot them up. You just try to blow everything out of the sky. But this is an old arcade uh, emulation and it runs great. It controls really well. And uh, I'm just, I'm like tickled with how well these games run. How about you, Austin? Definitely. Like uh, Chris said, most of these games are older than I am, but... I couldn't imagine the experience being much better sitting at one of these that were uh, manufactured specifically to play just this game. So I'm I'm really happy with the quality and how this thing ended up turning out for us. So that's basically it. Um, we hope we've given you enough information to get you started or at least get you interested. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. And we look forward to doing more videos for you very soon. Thanks.